Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And welcome to my hometown, the great city of Duluth. It has been a sincere privilege to serve as your Lieutenant Governor for the past three and a half years. I have been honored to work with you to advance our collective vision on many important issues. Retirement options for our parents and our grandparents, accessibility choices for our friends and our families with disabilities, and clean energy for the 21st century. And today, I want to tell you a story of hope, of opportunity, and of promise. Nearly four years ago, Governor Dayton and I beat the odds With the help of committed Minnesotans from across the state, we defied the political winds of 2010. Together, we defied the Tea Party wave that racked our state and our country. And for two years, the only thing stopping right-wing extremism from engulfing Minnesota was Governor Dayton's veto pen. But you don't have to go far to see the devastating impact of the Tea Party agenda. Here in Duluth, we are close with our friends and neighbors just a short drive across the Blotnick Bridge in Superior, Wisconsin. Our neighbors on the southeast bank of the St. Louis River have borne the brunt of the Tea Party agenda. Classrooms overcrowded, dwindling support for the sick and the poor, fewer job opportunities, and even fewer workforce protections. We know this is the wrong approach for 2014. Heck, it was the wrong approach in 1914. Thank you. Here in Minnesota, we know that by working together, we can create a better future for everyone. And after two years, of Republican control, Minnesota said, no more. We said no more to the politics of distrust. No more to the politics of division and disparagement. Instead, we said yes to a new beginning. Together, we elected a new legislature committed to making a difference. And during the past two years, we have begun to re-secure the promise of the middle class. Working together, we have invested in our state and our collective future, a future that has never looked brighter. Working together, we invested in education from cradle to college because as my late husband, the state senator, Sam Solon said, education is the great equalizer. Yeah. 
Working together, we invested in job creation and job training to provide great opportunities for Minnesotans now and in the future. We committed to providing all Minnesotans good, affordable health care, regardless of income or pre-existing conditions. And we didn't stop there because we knew it wasn't enough to just raise the minimum wage or demand e women get equal pay for equal work. We said it was time to support all Minnesotans, regardless of age, gender, skin color, physical ability, mental capacity, or sexual orientation. These impressive achievements reflect not just our DFL values, they reflect our Minnesota values. We can be proud of the work we've done, the progress we've made, and all we have accomplished. Together we have moved beyond empty platitudes and meaningless gestures to make measurable progress. More than 145,000 new jobs. More than 200,000 more people enrolled in good, affordable health care. and more than 55,000 children enrolled in free, all-day, everyday kindergarten by 2015. Today, Minnesota stands at the crossroads. Do we continue working for shared responsibility for our children and our grandchildren? and the generations that will surely follow? Or will we allow it to be taken from us in November? I believe the choice is clear. I believe you know the choice is clear. Now, after 27 years of public service, I am proud to pass the torch to others. For decades, Governor Dayton has been a great champion for the people of Minnesota. And this year, he is joined by Tina Smith, a great public servant in her own right. Together, they will continue to lead Minnesota, helping to fulfill the great promise of our state. But they can't do it alone. We need to reelect a strong DFL majority in the House and reelect DFL constitutional officers, Attorney General Swanson, State Auditor Otto, and a new DFL Secretary of State to replace dedicated, hardworking, retiring Mark Ritchie. And of course, we need to reelect Senator Franken. <laughs> Representative Nolan. Representative Peterson. Representative Ellison. Representative McCollum and Representative Walz. All of Minnesota's DFL congressional delegation who worked so hard for us in Washington. This year, we must work hand in hand to elect our fellow Democrats, incumbents and challengers alike. 
But as we do it, we must avoid the temptation to embrace the cynicism and conflict that often plague our politics. We must remember, regardless of party labels, we all are Minnesotans. This year, we must achieve victory without division by embracing our values and connecting with our fellow Minnesotans. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to serve, and God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.